So this discussion of uh, fare increases is fine in theory, but in practice, before an airline even thinks about what price they would like to increase to, the first thing the pricing analyst is going to do is consider what the competitive response to any increase will be. Because if the, if the other competitor or competitors in this market don't go along with an increase, then even attempting the increase is going to be costly for the airline and they're probably better off not even trying it because there will be some portion or so, some period of time where they're uncompetitive and they'll be losing revenue waiting for this increase to go through. If they don't think there's a high likelihood of the increase going through, they, they may not even attempt it uh, to begin with. So when we looked at this demand curve, and we said this is Airline One's demand curve, um, it's, it's, it's the demand curve facing one airline in the market, but there's also a market demand curve. So for simplicity, let's say that in this market there are two airlines, Airline One and Airline Two, and they both face the exact same demand curve. So they both have the same exact prices. So uh, this price quantity relationship at $100, there were 50 seats uh, demanded. At $110, there's 48 seats demanded. Both airlines have the exact same uh, demand curve. Well, when airline one increased their fare from 100, and one, uh, from 100 to $110, and we said that total revenue increased, if you assume that airline two simultaneously does the same thing, and simultaneously is, is not practicable, let's just assume at the same exact time they increased their fares and they were facing the exact same demand curve, then they would also see their revenue increase from $5,000 to $5,280. Well, that's the outcome that airline one wants when they attempt the increase but there are other possible outcomes and those are the things that we need to examine before we determine whether this is a um, a good increase or not so so let's expand this example let's write out the um, the revenue results for all the possible uh, outcomes from this pricing change let me see if I can oh, my my scroll is not working here let me try it again there we go um, so let's see, let's put, let's leave that there so we can see those original revenue numbers. So let's say we have uh, airline one, why oh, it's not writing, oh, okay, that's not right. Airline one and their price and quantity at uh, different price levels, so let's say there's uh, sorry, let me just get my colors here. Price, quantity, and revenue. And then for airline two, the same thing. Price, quantity, and revenue. So let's write airline two, airline two up here. Okay, so um, let's start at the original price level. So before any change takes place, the price that airline one had was one hundred dollars that resulted in fifty seats demanded and the revenue was uh, five thousand and uh, when we when we started the uh, airline two had the same exact price and we said the same exact demand curve so the same revenue okay now um, Airline one then decides to increase the price from 100 to 110. We said, given their demand curve, the quantity demanded at $110 would decrease to 48, and the revenue would result uh, in would increase to 50 to 80. Well, now let's uh, consider the different mm -hmm. responses that uh, airline two. Uh, can have. So let's first assume they go along with the increase. They also increase their fare from 100 to 110. They get 48 seats as a result and their revenue increases to uh, 5280. So under this scenario, 
both the airlines increased their fare and they both um, uh, increased revenue as a result. Well now let's consider what would happen if airline one, oh, let me change the uh, change colors there. Airline 1 increases their fare from 100 to 110 and airline 2 doesn't go along with the increase so they stay at $100. So let's think about what would happen in this scenario. So there's a price difference so the market's, uh, the market's not really in equilibrium here. Airline 1 is charging $10 more than airline 2. Well, when we were looking at just the price elasticity of demand, we could look at just one airline at a time and look at the demand curve facing that airline. But now that there's a price difference, we have to consider the substitution effect and the cross elasticity of demand. So if you recall, cross elasticity of demand is the change in quantity of one product as a result of a change in price of another product and when those two products are substitutes the price increase of one product will result in the quantity demand increase of the second product so I'm not sure how clear that was but in this case we have two 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 airline products two seats let's say that you know they're considered the same exact product they you know they go at the same time to the same destination when the price of airline one's product increases if the price of airline two's product doesn't increase that increase in price of airline one will result in an increase in demand of airline two's product so what's going to happen is we're going to have a shift in demand from airline one to airline two and if you remember from our elasticity discussions I said be careful about talking about movements along the demand curve are really changes in the quantity of demand when we talk about an increase in demand we're actually talking about the curve shifting left or right and that's what's happening here so while airline one increases their fare the demand for airline two's product increases and their demand curve shifts to the right the extent of that shift is determined by the degree of elasticity in the market if they're perfect substitutes absolute perfect substitutes and there were no capacity restrictions or anything like that all of the demand that airline one was getting before would now shift to airline two because the customers would see no difference in the product they would see no reason to pay more for airline one than airline two now in practice there's brand differences and things like that but for our example uh, to make the the example really clear we're going to assume that when one airline has a higher price than the other all of the demand will shift from one airline to the other so in this case when we have uh, 110 dollars uh, for airline one seats their demand is going to go to zero and their revenue will go to zero airline two all of that demand will shift to airline two at one hundred dollars the demand is uh, the quantity demanded is fifty so now the the all of the demand is going to go to airline two and they're going to see uh, quantity demanded of one hundred and their total revenue is going to increase to ten thousand dollars okay so that's when the um, the two airlines don't have the same the same price now this is not a stable point you can imagine that airline one is not going to be satisfied with the, with that they're, they're not going to stay there they're going to hope that airline two moves moves up here to this point where they both have more revenue um, but as you know as I said at the beginning of this video if the airline doesn't believe that their competitor is going to go along with the increase it's it's uh, it's costly to them to even try because there's going to be some period of time while they're waiting for their competitor to respond that they are not competitive and they're going to lose this you know this re revenue for some period of time it won't be the the whole ten thousand um, we didn't really specify what time period that ten thousand was for but there is a cost to being out there uncompetitive and an airline has to incur that cost because fare increases do not uh, occur simultaneously uh, the first airline has to um, uh, actually 
uh, issue the price increase and then wait for some period of time for airline two to respond. Okay, let's say um, let's say we have just the opposite because um, it doesn't seem relevant, but because I want to, uh, I'm thinking of the next example I'm going to use. Let's say airline one was the one that um, didn't increase price; they would get all of the all of the uh, seats, all of the demand, and all of the revenue. So let's just say they were we they weren't the ones um, initiating the fare increase. It was airline two their demand would go down to zero and their revenue would be zero. So let's say, let's see, we have the, um, there were no increases, both increased, and now one air airline increases and the other one uh, does not. So this is really a, a dynamic situation, right? And when airlines are going through this, they're thinking about the time that it's going to take for this to all play out. They are likely going to end at one of two points, either uh, this point, which is where they started, or this point, which is where they want to be. These two points down here are uh, are really not stable points. Neither airline is going to be happy with these situations, and they're not going to they're not going to stay there. They're going to find their equilibrium at one of these two. Uh, one of these two price combinations. And the way to think about this, uh, the, the, the best framework to think about how airlines go through this process and end up at some equilibrium point is to look at game theory, game theory, uh, and we'll take a look at that in the next video.